Setting up your key bindings in Elite Dangerous can be quite difficult if you want to make a full set of custom key bindings. So today, I'm going to give you the ultimate key binding guide. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. Game Glass allows you to take control of your ship from a tablet or a phone. Not only that, but you also get on-screen information about your ship, your targets, and the world around you. So gone are the days where you have no more room for your key bindings, or you have to alt tap out of the game to look up market data. On top of that, Game Glass also works with Star Citizens, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. If you like it and want more shards and features, you can buy them individually, or you can subscribe to Glass Pass. Use offer code DTEA on checkout and get 5% off your first purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous, or well, at least the settings menu of Elite Dangerous. Today we're going to go through all the different key bindings, one group at a time. We're going to talk about what all the different key bindings do, so if you're ever in doubt, you can use this as kind of a reference guide, is what I had in mind. Both the timeline below and in the description, you will see timestamps where you can jump in. So if you're looking for something in a specific category, then you can just go find that timestamp, jump to that point in the video, and you can then get the information you need. But first, a little bit about presets and some general information. You will notice here that throughout all these menus, you can set two different keys for the same key binding. This is quite useful if you, for instance, are running, as I do here on the left-hand side, I'm running my setup for the whole test that I'm using. And on the right-hand side, I will then be using whatever I want for any third-party programs that could be Game Glass, Voice Attack, whatever software, if you're using anything, you can set that. Or if you just want two different keys to do the same thing, you have the option to do that. When it comes to presets, the game does come with quite a few presets um, on its own and more can be created. But it's a good idea to start at either the generic joystick or keyboard and mouse, depending on what you're trying to do. That means the majority of your key bindings will be set okay, and then you can kind of work and customize it from there. Towards the end of the video, we are gonna talk about how you can store and back up your key bindings, so once you've set them up, you don't have to ever lose them again. But let's jump into the first category, which is mouse controls. As the name suggests, this is all about controlling the game with a mouse. You can enable the mouse X axis or Y axis here. You can say I set this to off because I don't use the mouse, I have a HOTAS. But if you want to use the mouse, you want to make sure that this was set to either roll or yaw. So your X axis, that's your left to right, can be roll or yaw. And same here with your Y axis, you can set that to pitch or pitch inverted. You also have the option to set a relative mouse axis. This will change the behavior of the controls depending on how you set it. If you set this to off, there will be a virtual center point and you will have to return the mouse to center. So if I, for instance, let's say I've set this one to roll and I now move the mouse out to, uh, to the right, my ship will begin rolling right and it will keep doing that until I pull it back to the center. If I set, the, set this to on, it will roll as long as I move the mouse. When I stop moving the mouse, the ship will slowly start or stop rolling. Um, so it the kind of the center point slowly follows the mouse, if that makes sense. You also have here the option to so reset the mouse center. So if you want to say, I want to recenter the mouse, you can set key bindings for that. And of course, you can set mouse sensitivity and the relative mouse rate. So that is, if you have the relative axis moved on, how quickly should it recenter itself? If you want a little bit of dead zone close to the center, so you actually need to move the mouse a little bit before it begins activating, you can set that here. And you can also set the power curve. The power curb is uh, if you want more accuracy in close. So if you if I move this up higher, that means I will now have a very little response when I move the mouse a little bit, but I will get a more rapid response if I move the mouse a lot. So this can help you with accuracy, especially if you want to use fixed weapons, for instance, and you're flying with a mouse, then increasing the mouse power curb can help you have a little bit more accuracy um, with, uh, with your weapons. And finally, of course, you have the show mouse widget. That's just that little square you get in the middle of the screen, whether that should be displayed or not. Next, we have flight rotation. Here we can first set our yaw axis. This would be an analog axis. So that would be what you'd be using if you have a HOTAS. And you can click the little plus sign to set the dead zones. Remember that this is on top of any dead zones you set in any external software. So for instance, I control all my dead zones through the software that comes with my HOTAS rather than doing it in-game. But you can do it in game if you like, it's a matter of preference. You can out here sw switch between whether it should be regular or inverted. 
You also have the options to set a, a your axis as a key binding. And that basically means it would be like if you basically want to use, let's say, arrow keys, I don't know, for your. You can actually also set axis on these key bindings. And if you do that, set an analog axis, it will activate when the axis passes the 50% point. But it won't be an analog axis. It will still be an on-off um, switch, but it will come on when you pass the 50% mark. You can also set the role into your can be set to either uh, initial role or on low role. If you go with the initial uh, role, that means as soon as you start a role, it will begin the your action. If you set it on low role, that means only if you do very slight roles will it actually do your. If you do an aggressive role, it won't your. So again, you can uh, fine tune those settings there. And then you can set how roll into your should behave when you go flight assist off. And again, you can either see that roll into your should be set off on initial or low. And that can, of course, be set separately to what you set up here. Then you have a roll into your button. This allows you to toggle this effect on or off doing gameplay. And as with many of these other buttons, you have the option down here in the button mode to select it to either be hold or toggle. If you set it to hold, the roll into your will only take effect as long as this button is pressed down. When you release it, it will be disabled again. If you set it to toggle, you press the button once and the effect is now toggled. And when you press it again, it will then be disabled. This is a common thing for a lot of the different button presses. So I'm not going to go into detail with it every time. I'm just going to mention that it's there. And then we have the actual role settings where you can set your role axis, again, regular or inverted. And you can set your role left or right as a uh, key press, um, just as before. And of course, you have your dead zones. Exactly the same story with pitch. This is your up and down axis, inverted or regular. I fly inverted here. And again, you can also set key bindings and of course, dead zones again. Next up, we have flight thrust. So this is your like maneuvering thrusters, right? So you have lateral thrust axis. So this is if you want to use an axis for moving your ship um, left to right. This is basically strafing left and right. And you can see here, I actually also have an axis set um, as the uh, left and right toggles. That's what we talked about earlier because I have two analog sticks with both use. One of them, I will have fine control. I have the full analog input, but I can also set the uh, thrust left and thrust right here. That means when that stick goes over the 50% mark, it will engage. And I don't have a lot of control over it, but for aggressive maneuvers, it's, it's nice to have and I like that. And of course, dead zones. Here we have the exact same setup, but for vertical thrust. And finally, you have forward and backwards thrust. This is maneuvering thrust, not your main thrusters. Those are uh, controlled separately. And you can see I haven't even set these because I just knew to use the normal thruster settings. And then we have alternate flight controls. Now here, you can basically set all the same things as we just did. Yaw, roll, pitch, lateral thrust, and vertical thrust axes. All of these can be set again. And you can then set a button here that allows you to either toggle or hold, activate these alternate settings. Remember that there are separate settings for docking. So if you want to have separate control schemes for docking, they are in another place. These settings are just, if you have, I don't know, maybe you want different settings based on if you're flying a small nimble ship or a big heavy ship, then you can, can set these settings in here. You can see I'm not using them, but they are there. And of course, all of them again has dead zones. No um, no digital input for these, only analog axes in this case. Now we get to the flight throttle. In here, first of all, we have the throttle axis. Again, this is if you want to use an analog axis to control your throttle. You set that here. Next, you need to set the range. That is either forward only or full range. If you set it to full range, that means when your throttle is in the minimum position, that will be 100% reverse. When the throttle is at the center, if you go full range, if it's the center, your throttle will be turned off, it will be idle. And if you push it full forward, you will go full speed ahead. If you set it to forward only, that means your throttling is idle when you are when your throttle is at zero and it is at 100% when you push it all the way up. That means you do not have reverse on the throttle by default. You will have to set the forward only throttle reverse button. This is essentially just allowing you to set a reverse gear. You can see I use this. I have a button on my uh, on my uh, my throttle. If I click that, my throttle axis is now reversed, meaning that now if I go full throttle, I will go to 100% reverse. And again, of course, this button can be set to toggle or hold. I don't reverse that much, so I've set it to hold. You can also set key bindings here to increase or decrease your throttle. 
and you can set it here for how it should increase. You can set it to continuous, that means you hold it down and it will then increase or decrease. Or you can set it to how many intervals it should jump, then every time you press the button it will then jump up or down by that interval that you set in here. You also have options to set various speeds, so you can quickly get specific speeds being everywhere from minus 100 to plus 100 at 25% increments. The most useful one is plus 75% thrust, as you can see I have here, because if you are in super cruise and you're approaching an object, setting your 75% um, thrust means you're going to be at a nice uh, approach speed, so you don't accidentally overshoot. And now we get to flight landing overrides, and this is once again your yaw, pitch, roll, lateral thrust, and vertical thrust, and your thrust forward and backward axis. All of these things we talked about before, but in this case it is when landing. So if you want to, you can set all of these things again, and again with dead zones, and all the same thing as before. You can set all these a third time, and this will then automatically be activated if you are going into docking. You don't have to set all of them, you don't have to set them at all. If you haven't set anything, it will just use your default. But if you set any of these, they will then take over if you want different key bindings or different um, uh, configurations when you're landing. You can control that in here. And again, it's exactly the same as all the stuff that we talked about before. You also have roll into your, or your into roll, sorry, if you want that. Um, and the same with the, with the axis here. Uh, that you can also uh, you can set down here for for the forward and backwards thrust. Then we get to flight miscellaneous. Under flight miscellaneous, we can, for instance, toggle our flight assist, which we can either set to toggle or hold. Then you have your engine boost. That should be pretty self-explanatory what that is. Toggle frame shift drive. This is just the normal jump button. If you want to jump, and depending on what you have targeted, it will either send you to super cruise or make a hyperspace jump to another system. If you have a system targeted or a frameshift wake, it will try to do a jump to that system. And if you have nothing else targeted, it will send you into Super Cruise. You will also set key bindings for going directly into Super Cruise or directly to hyperspace jump. I've never had the need to go directly into hyperspace, but I have actually had the need to go direct. Super Cruise can be quite useful. If you're coming up from a planet and the system you're jumping to is on the other side of the planet, you can't jump because it's obscured. And if you don't have this button set, you have to untarget the planet to go into Super Cruise, fly around the planet, retarget the system, and then jump. But with this one uh, set, you can just go straight into Super Cruise without untargeting the system, fly around the planet, and then keep going. Next up, we have rotational correction, which you can set uh, on or off. Uh, default is that it's on, but you can, uh, can turn it off, and again, you can set this to toggle or hold. Rotational correction is if you're flying into a station, you will of course notice the station is rotating. But as soon as you go into the hangar, your ship will just be basically hovering inside the hangar as if the station was rotated. That's because rotational correction is on. If you turn this off, the station will be rotating around you or it will feel like maybe you're rotating inside the station because the ship doesn't automatically match the rotation of, um, of the station around it. So you can set that here and you can toggle that on and off doing gameplay if you wish to. Next up, we have the targeting menu. First of all, target right ahead. That's the default targeting, like to target what's right in front of you. You can go to cycle next target or cycle previous target. Then it will just cycle through all the targets that are in range. I have this on a small dial on the, on the base of my, uh, on my throttle. This allows me to quickly cycle through, see what targets are in range. So if I'm out like hunting NPCs or something like that, going bounty hunting, you can also select highest threat, so then the game will try to determine what it thinks is the highest threat around you. And it has a list here showing you what order it um, um, it selects. It starts by selecting incoming missiles, it's always the highest threat. Next up is a ship that has hit you in the last few seconds, then it's ships that has fired at you in the last few seconds but missed. Then you have any hostile ships with weapons deployed, and finally any hostile ships that may not have had weapons deployed. So that's the order it's trying to, uh, to target in. Clicking that will just set select whatever it had uh, had target, or whatever it deems being the highest threat. You can also cycle forward and backward through hostile targets. So I have that set as well, as you can see. Next up, something I think a lot of people don't use, but I find it extremely useful. That is targeting wingmans. This means if you're in a wing and you want to target someone specifically, you can just have a key binding dedicated for that. Click that button and that wingman is targeted. The reason why this is smart is because of this key binding, which is select wingman's target. So let's say that you're out uh, hunting, again, we're going to use the same example where we're out hunting uh, bounties, and you're flying with someone to say, oh, I have, a, I have a python here. Okay, you are wingman one, 
click wingman 1, select his target, and you now have the same target as your wingman. Very nice. You also have the option to uh, engage Nablock to whatever wingman you have targeted. So again, if someone says, oh, drop on me, okay, wingman, whatever number he is, let's say he's 2, click 2, click Nablock, and you're Nablocked onto him. So this can be very, very useful if you're flying in a wing. Next up, you can cycle through subsystems. So if you have something targeted and you want to cycle through the subsystems to maybe quickly find something, this can be very useful. If you put this on something like a scroll wheel, for instance, then you can just quickly just scroll through all the subsystems to find that power plant or thrusters or whatever you are intended to shoot at. And finally, one I think I really recommend everybody to set is target next system in route. This means, let's say you're flying around, maybe you're out exploring and you spot a planet you think is interesting, so you target that planet, you fly to the planet, you scan it, you, maybe you explore around for a bit, uh, and eventually you're ready to move on to the next system. But you don't have the next system targeted. What you would have to do if you didn't have this set was to go in and replot your route. But with this one set, you just click next system in route, and there you go. You now have the next system in your currently plotted route selected again, and you could just jump on. So this can be a massive time saver if uh, if you like to explore. Then we get to weapons. This is quite simple. You have primary fire. That's your one in your firing groups. You have secondary fire. That's your two in your firing groups. You have cycling forward or backwards through your fire groups. That is the ABC things. You can deploy hard points, of course. And finally, you have a setting here whether you want that firing deploys your hard points. If you set this to on, that means if you pull a trigger while your hard points are not deployed, it will then automatically deploy your hard points immediately for you. I set this to off. I don't want to have any uh, hard points deployed without me specifically selling it to, so I run with this off, but you can set it for whatever you prefer. We have cooling. Again, cooling is very straightforward. We have silent running. That basically enables silent running, and again, toggle or hold. And you have a key binding for deploying heatsink. You can bind this to a firing group, but I often find it being very handy to have a dedicated uh, key for it so that I don't have to have it in my firing groups. I can just always have that heat sink available without sitting scrolling through fire groups or something like that. Then we get to the normal miscellaneous menu. There's a lot of stuff in here. So first of all, we have ship lights, sensors, zoom axis, you know, the little hot in front of you. Yeah, you can zoom in and out on that if you want to. You can set that to an axis or you can set that to key bindings and of course, dead zones as it is an axis. Then you have your pip management, where you can set divert power to engines, weapons, system, or balance loadout. Then you have reset HMD orientation. HMD is head mount display or VR headset. So if you're playing in VR and you want the, um, the location of your headset to snap back into the center looking straight forward, you can set a key for that. So let's say, I don't know, something happens, maybe you're bad tracking and your headset drifts and all of a sudden, instead of you looking straight forward to look out your wind, uh, the front of your ship, you have to now look to the side and that could be annoying. So you now have the option to just sit where you want the sensor to be, click that key and it will recenter everything for you. Then you have cargo scoop, of course, and that's just deploy your cargo scoop, set that to toggle or hold just as with everything else. Jettison all cargo, also pretty self-explanatory. Empty your cargo, hold, jettison everything into space. Then of course, deploying landing gear. Then you can mute your microphone if you use the in-game uh, voice communication, which can also be set to toggle or hold. Then you have a mute microphone button um, that basically depends on what you set this setting to. It can do different things, but you can set this to toggle or hold, but you can set it to either toggle the microphone on or off. So basically clicking it will then mute, clicking it again will turn the microphone back on. You can set it to push to talk or push to mute. So plenty of options there. And you can set the default state for the, your microphone in CQC. Then we have some other useful ones, just like with the heat sinks. It can be useful to have direct access, have a dedicated key to stuff like shield cell banks, chaff launchers, ECM. Next up, we have the context menu. This is the one I think mostly console players will be familiar with this, where you get basically like the, the, the control scheme showing up on screen. You can turn that off. Um, I've never actually seen this being used on PC, but I guess you could if uh, if you really needed to. Then you have key bindings to turn your weapon color or engine color effects on or off. So if you set in livery, set custom engine colors or custom weapon colors, you can actually turn that off live doing gameplay, um, which can be quite fun. I've seen people do some fun things with it where they wrote a script that would like every half second turn their weapon colors um, on and off or their engine colors, basically making them flash a different colors and 
you can do some silly things with this if you want to. <laughs> Next up, we have night vision. Again, turning night vision on or off, but this is of course default as a toggle. You don't have any options. Same with these ones, these are all default toggles. Next, we have the mode switch menus. And here, first of all, you have some UI focus. I think this is mostly for if you're using, uh, using VR, as far as I can recall, where you can basically say, I want to focus on a specific context menu. Um, then you can set a key for jumping into that menu so that you don't accidentally activate that menu just by, um, just by looking around. Um, you can set that in here. You can say how, well, if you click the UI focus button, what should it then do? Should it then take the menu that you're currently looking at or should it cycle through the menus? You can also set direct key bindings, of course, to go into your different panels. These are the right, left hand, right hand panels, um, the panels above you and the one um, below you where you often find stuff like your SLV and fighters. These can all be set here. Um, and also focus on text field input. So if there are text field, it would automatically focus on those. You can set this here as well. Um, and here you can also do what it does if you look directly at uh, one of the panels. This could be quite nifty, especially in VR. It's important to set these settings for your preference. I've said doing nothing. That means panels do not open around me. So if you see I'm in VR and I look to the right, my right hand panel will not open um, unless I set it in here. Um, you can then go focus the panel. So that means if I look over there, the panel will then open up and it will immediately focus the panel. Next up, you have the enable UI camera log on. And this is basically when you open a panel, the camera will automatically turn and log on to the panel. If you turn this to off, it will not. You'll have to turn your head manually. Again, in VR, all with the head look like mechanics that you can also um, you can also set for key bindings for. But again, I really recommend you keep this to on. It's probably the most, uh, most natural thing to do. Then we have key bindings for opening and closing galaxy map, system maps, you can open or show the uh, the CQC score screen. That can be a toggle or a hold. And then we have head look. Basically, this is to uh, enable you to look around. Normally, of course, when you play, if you're not playing in VR, your head will be focused straight forward unless you're looking at the different UI panels. But you can enable head look. Um, you can also go directly to um, the game menu, the friends menu, or you can open up um, the discoveries from the codex if you want to. And you can also here, you set the switching cockpit mode that is going between analysis and combat mode. And again, a direct input to open up your FSS scanner. Next up, we have the interface mode. So this is, we just had the mode switch. So this is how you get into the different modes. So when you now have focus on a UI panel, then you set the controls for how you move up down, left, right, and you select in those UI panels as well as go backwards. You also have for the next panel and the previous panel, next page and previous page. The pages are more, I think, for um, when you have like a full screen interface or so not the small side panel. So if you have some stuff like in the codex or something, this is to scroll through pages there. So the one you probably want to go through the different tabs in your UI panels, these are the ones here. And here we have the settings for head look. Again, you can set how you want to control your head look. So if you enable head look as we did up in the mode switch menu, you now have control over your head of the character in game. You can set that to be controlled with the mouse. And you can set again if you want it to be uh, inverted. And you can set the sensitivity here. The head look default state is in my case off. You can set that to on if you want to. If you want it to be on all the time, you don't want to toggle in and out of it. You can set this to on. And head look button increments can be continuous, small increment, medium or large increments. So this is basically if you want to lose, use uh, key bindings down here, then you can determine how much they should turn. If they're continuous, again, the same, you hold down the key and it will begin to turn your head smoothly. And if you set the increments, then it will just jump in small increments to, uh, to the side where you go. Next, you have the head look axis mode. This is how the head look axis is functioning. So if you are in head look mode, you want to turn your head around, how does that function? I've set mine to accumulate. That means if I turn my, uh, my axis that I use to control my head look, if I turn that to the right, the head will turn to the right as long as I have that axis pushed to the right. When I let go of that axis and it goes back to zero, the head will stop where it is. You can set this into direct mode. If you do that, if I begin to move that axis again to the right, the head will begin, begin to move right as I uh, as I move the axis. But as I center it, the head will then center back. So basically now you're directly controlling the head um, where it is instead of it being just the velocity. Center when head look is inactive. So if you go out of head lock mode, should it then center back to the default position? I set this to on. You can set this to off. If you have this to off, that means if you go out of head look, 
your head might be stuck in some weird angle angle you might want that you might not you can set this here head look sensitivity how head look it is and you can set some smoothening on and off basically if you want to have smooth motion as you move uh, your head around again this is not vr i should say this is just manually controlling it from uh, uh, with a mouse or a whole test or something like that but you can set some smoothing if you want smoother motion reset head look that will set the head look back to the default position looking up you can set analog axis for looking up and down and also analog axis no, sorry digital buttons sorry these are digital buttons for looking up and down and left and right and you can set analog axis here for looking left and right and up and down, sorry, up and down here, left and right down here, <laughs> with of course dead zones as always. Next we have the galaxy map, where you can set basically your camera controls, if you want to be able to pitch your camera up and down, draw your camera uh, left and right, strafe your camera, um, translate it along the y-axis, which is, well, forward, backwards it seems, strafe the camera left and right, move the camera up and down. Again, all of these again, of course, are both as analog axis or digital input and they all have dead zones also have the zoom axis if you want to be able to zoom in and out you can set this here or as of course also as key bindings and here you have a key that allows you to swap your y-axis over so it functions like the z-axis remember the y-axis was back and forth and z-axis was up and down so if you are limited on number of axes that you have available you can basically press a key and now instead of moving your camera back and forth that axis will now move your camera up and down galaxy camera select current system so it basically moves the camera to your current system okay we're about to pass the halfway mark and we're getting into driving driving assist is basically flight assist spot for cars Drive Assist default, you can set this to on or off. Ask if the mouse x-axis should be able to steer the car. I've set this to off since I used my Hotus. Um, and again, relative steering. That means, again, it's the same as we talked about before with mouse control uh, for the ship with the relative steering, where do you want this to be a fixed center where you will manually have to center it back to some point on the mouse pad in order for it to drive straight? Or should you just drive straight as soon as you let go of the mouse? You can control this from here. Same with your roll axis, which you can control with your, your mouse X. You can also set that on, that on or off if you want to. And I'll also set that as whether it should be relatively relative on or off. And then finally, we have the pitch. Again, I'm not using my mouse, so all of this are off for me. But if you want to use the mouse, this is where you set those settings. I rather want to uh, control my SRV from, uh, from my hotess. So I have set a steering axis. And you can also set buttons if you want to be able to control it with uh, WASD, for instance. And the same, of course, you also have roll axis. And these have dead zones. Pitch axis with pitch buttons. Vertical thrust. That would basically be your boost um, in, uh, in the SRV. Fire the primary weapon, fire the secondary weapon, enable the handbrake. I think I've set this to hold. Yeah, you can set your handbrake here. You can turn off the ship lights, or SRV lights, I guess it would be, which is a separate key binding from the other lights on your main ship, but you can set them to the same thing because you will never be in a situation where you're both in your SRV and your ship at the same time. Toggling the turrets, allowing you to go into the turret of the SRV, cycling next or previous fire groups um, in the SRV. Next, we have the drive targeting. This is all about targeting while in the SRV. And there's only one setting, which is select target straight ahead. Next, we have uh, driving turret controls. So you remember up here, we could, uh, we could toggle uh, the turret. That means we go into turret mode. When we do that, we need to control it. Again, set your mouse settings here just as before. X-axis, Y-axis, and whether it's relative. Also, what I use here, you can also set analog axis for a joystick or digital input for a single button presses. You can set the mouse sensitivity here, how sensitive the mouse should be when controlling the turrets. And the mouse dead zone. Um, again, I don't use the mouse, so don't worry about what those settings are right now for me. Just as with the ship, you can also set a power curve, allowing you to get more accurate when you are moving the mouse slightly. But again, you can also move the mouse quickly to get more violent movements. Then we have drive throttle. Here you can set your, basically this is just a speed axis. Um, back and forth. This is just controlling the speed of your SRV. And again, you can set the throttle axis range to forward only or full range. Same deal as we did up when we talked about the ship throttle, where forward only, of course, means that your full range of the throttle is either from neutral to full speed ahead, where full range means that it now goes from full reverse to full forward with neutral being in the center. And then again, you also have a reverse button, forward only, uh, toggle reverse that you can set to either hold or toggle depending on what you need you can also increment the uh, speed of your srv by uh, individual button presses these are done here 
And you can set it whether it should be continuous, so you need to hold down the key to increase, or whether it should jump in various intervals, exactly the same as with the ship. You can also set an accelerate and decelerate axis. I don't know why you would ever want those to be separate, but you apparently can. So, well, if you know of a good use case for this, maybe do, do tell me, but I don't know. You can set those individually, fair enough. Let's jump on to driving miscellaneous. And in here, again, you have your PIP management for your SRV, diverting power to engines, weapons, and system. And again, balancing that. And you have your opening your uh, cargo scoop, toggle or hold. You can empty your cargo on your SRV by jettisoning all your cargo. And you have a direct key binding for recalling your ship if you ever need to. Next, we have the driving mode switch. Exactly the same as the normal UI modes or mode switch we talked about up here, but now they're just separate for when you are in the SRV. So most likely you want the same settings down here as you did up in the other one, where you can do a UI focus, you can focus on the various panels, and you can open your galaxy map, open closed uh, systems, open your uh, discoveries in the codex. And again, also here's a separate button you can set if you want to toggle head look in the SRV. So you basically have completely separate controls for all of this. Then we get to the multi-crew section. Here you can toggle between the different um, multi-crew um, modes, I guess. I guess it's if you are in, uh, let's say you are Gunner, I think. I think this is the key that then allows you to jump out of the ship to get external view and control your, your weapons. You can set your primary fire and secondary fire. When you are in multi-crew, uh, you also have primary and secondary utility firing groups. So you can set those here, which is unbound for me. You can set what your mouse axis does, your um, X axis and Y axis minus it to your and pitch. Um, but again, I don't really use this that much. And also you have separate axes you can set for the third person camera. So that is if you are in the gunner seat, you go out to a third person view to control the web, uh, some of the turrets aboard the ship. You can control what these axes, how these axes work. And of course they have dead zones. Uh, or you can set individual key presses to control those as well. Third person field of view axis, this is essentially your zoom. So if you are outside the ship controlling the turret, you want to zoom in on something. Thing. you can then set an axis to control that or individual key presses and you can cycle through the different uis again so you have some ui control here next we get to fighter orders this is all about uh, controlling your fighter you can have a uh, co direct command to recall your fighter uh, ask it to defend engage at will um, attack target maintain formation hold position follow me or opening up the orders menu if you want that. All that you can set in here. So if you want to give quick access, quick commands to your fighter, you can just set some key bindings for that. And off you go. Now next up, we're getting into three different camera menus. I just want to explain the difference between them because it's going to be a lot easier when we dive into them. The camera suite is not the free camera where you can freely move the camera around. This is, you know, when you can cycle through different default positions. This is where you can control the um, the, the the blur and the depths of field or the zoom levels and all that stuff you can control from um, um, from inside the camera suite. And then here you have sent a separate menu that are for the free camera. So if you move into free camera mode, then you can move the camera around freely and position it where you want to. And then finally, we have also for the store camera. So if you are in the ARC store and you want to look at different paint jobs in the ARC store, there are separate controls for that as well. But camera suite, let's start with that. First of all, you have separate settings for toggling the camera suite in either the ship or SRV. I've set it to the same control alt space, which is the default. Again, as I said, these are the fixed position, the camera suite, so you can cycle to the previous or the next camera. And you can enable free camera. If you click enable free camera, then we need to go around to the free camera menu, which we'll do in a second. You can also go directly to the different positions. So you can set these default. You don't really need those. You can just cycle through them. Uh, with these settings up here with the previous next camera. So now we get into the free camera mode. This is where all the fun stuff happens. First of all, you can toggle the hot. It's not the hot in your ship. It's that special hot that comes up when you open the camera suite. You can turn that off here or on to toggle it on and off. Increase, decrease speed depends, uh, sets how sensitive the camera is in terms of moving around. So if you increase the speed a lot, that means the camera will move very fast around or decrease it, it will move very slowly. So if you want those nice, slow, like panning shots, then you need to go and decrease your speed a little bit from the default. And then you get these nice, smooth tracking shots around your ships. All the same controls that you have for your ship with pips, pits, roll, jaw, forward, strafing up and down, all those controls you have again bought for your camera. And these again set 
separately down here. Here you have your forward um, axis moving back and forth, forward only or full range, same as on the SRV, same as on the fighters, same as on the ships. Um, and you have dedicated key presses for that. Uh, lateral axis that is moving left and right. You can set an axis for that. And again, key presses. And of course, these has dead zones. We have your lift axis up and down. And you can also have a move the free camera up using an analog input. I don't know again why you would split this up. Um, I just used the axis. I found this to be okay. Uh, I'll be just fine. So I don't know. But you can set these uh, analog axis down here as well if you want to. And also have key presses for moving up and down. And you can set mouse axis if you want to be able to well, control the camera with your mouse. You can turn this on down here. Then you have your pitch axis. And then you have the, if you use the mouse axis, you have the sensitivity here. And whether it is relative or not. And again, we talked about these before. When you have the relative set to on, that means that the camera will only move as you move the mouse. It will then slowly stop on its own um, after you stop moving the mouse. Or you can set this to off. Then it will just be... If you move the mouse, it will start moving in that direction. It will continue to move in that direction until you pull it back to the center. We have pitch up uh, as key presses again. And then we have the yaw as key presses also, both an axis and key presses. And again, roll also as key presses. And now we come to some of the more fancy settings that can be, uh, be quite nice to have. You can set stabilization on and off. This is whether the camera should be uh, following the rotation of the ship. So imagine that you have a you set your camera up as a chase cam. You're like chasing after your ship, but you're rolling your ship around. You can either set if if stabilization is set to on, then the camera will roll with the ship. If it says to off, the camera will stay stationary, it won't roll, but the ship will roll in front of you. So this you can control from here. Camera slash ship control toggles. This allows you to when you are in free camera to toggle between controlling the ship or the camera. So you move the camera around, you get it in the position you want. Now you want to do the movements with your ship. So you toggle that, you click that key, you, now you have uh, movements uh, controls over your ship and you can fly the ship around. And here you can attach or, um, or detach um, the camera. And this is attaching or detaching to your ship. So this means uh, if you are in, in, in free camera mode and you attach to the ship, that means the camera will now stay in the same position. So this would be if you want to do a chase cam. You Position the camera where you want relative to the ship. You attach to the ship and then the camera will stay in the same position compared to the ship and it will follow that uh, around. You can turn that or toggle that back and forth on it here. Key binding for, um, for exiting the free camera mode. Then you have your zoom slash blur toggle. That because you have the same key bindings for controlling your zoom uh, and blur and you need to toggle between them. You can't control both at the same time. There's a key for that. Then you have increased zoom slash focus um, distance. And those keys are again set here. That's what you're toggling between here, whether you want to increase or decrease zoom or increase or decrease the focus distance. And finally, you have a set of key bindings that allows you to increase or decrease the amount of blur that you have in the image if you have this toggled over to the blur mode and not the zoom mode. So keep that in mind. Then we have the store camera menus. Here again, hold to, uh, to rotate. If you hold this down, then you can rotate the camera with your mouse. But you also have the options to control this with different axes, where you have pitch and yaw only. Um, again, the roll is then uh, uh, controlled up here. And you have the camera zoom in and out. And you have the store toggle, so you can basically toggle the store UI on and off here. I don't use this very much, but you can control this from in here. Then we have the hollow me menu. Here you can control your, your hollow me you can undo or redo your changes to your hollow me you can toggle my mouse rotation so you can use the mouse to rotate around the your character uh, while in hollow me and you can also set a rotation axis here if you don't want to use the mouse which of course has that zones playlist something that was introduced relatively recently where you can put galnet articles or stuff from the codex into a playlist and sit and listen to it you can control this play pause skip to the next tracks Skip to the forward track or clear your queue. So this has nothing to do with external music or something like that. It's just listening to the stuff in game. Then we get to the FSS scanner. This is all about controlling your frame shift scanner. Again, when you're in FSS mode, you have a camera. We need access to control this camera. So again, we have a camera pitch with that zones, camera yaw with that zones, and of course key bindings for it. Zoom to target. So if you have a you have your camera pointing to a target, you want to zoom in on that to maybe. Uh, do more detailed scans of it or whatever you're doing. 
you have a key for that, and you have a key for zooming out again. And you can do this in small steps instead. If you don't want to zoom in all the way to a target, you can set that there if you want to. You have tuning. You have two types of tuning. You have the normal tuning and you have the absolute tuning. Now, the normal tuning is essentially an uh, a, a like a, a a throttle basically if you put the throttle up then it will be moving to uh, to the right if you pull your throttle down it will be moving to the left um you can set this here with your dead zones or you can set the absolute um tuning this means if you have your throttle if you set this to your throttle axis for instance i, I have it for something else but you can set it to your throttle axis if it's all the way at the all the way down your throttle then the slider will be all the way to uh, um to the left that will be here for you because it's mirrored. <laughs> and if you could put the throttle all the way up, then your slider will be moving all the way up to um, uh, to the right. So I have a small extra like uh, it, it's for, it's essentially for flaps here on the side. But I've set this to uh, to my absolute tuning axis, meaning that I can set this axis to be let's say right on Earth likes. And as soon as I open up, it will always be in the same position. I can then sit and tune this axis back and forth to uh, to find the stuff I need and and. I, I like that better, but you can then control that there. Tuning sensitivity, basically, yeah. How sensitive are this tuning axis here? Discovery scan, if you want to basically honk the system, um, you can do that. Leaving the FSS mode, you can do this from here. And then you have, if you want to use the mouse axis instead of the uh, the camera axis up here, or maybe use both even, you can then turn these off here. And again, relative mode is also set here. We talked about this now many times, where um, when the relative mode is on, then it will cause the position. It will cause the mouse position to center over time. This is again on the x-axis, meaning if you move your mouse, then the camera moves. You stop moving the mouse, the camera stops moving. Um, if it sets to uh, to off, then your camera will start moving as you move the mouse, and will continue to move until you move your mouse back to the center. So that can be controlled from here. Again, sensitivity for that, and dead zones for that. And a power curve, if you want more accuracy when it's with small movements, you can increase your power curve. And you can still then do violent movements by moving the mouse fast. You can target your current signal if you want to automatically target it. Well, go ahead. You can do this here. Or you can show the help page if you need help in there as well. And the final menu is the details surface scanner. So for the, I don't know, millionth time, we're probably going to set up more jaw axis. Yes, we are. So first of all, toggle back and forth view. The detail surface scanner, that's when you're probing a planet. And maybe you want to see what's on the back side of the planet, how good your coverage is on the back. You can then do that by toggling this back and forth. You can set this to hold or toggle. I set mine to, uh, to toggle, but you can do that as you see fit. Exit the detail surface scanner. You can set up for mouse controls. If you want to use your mouse for this, you can turn this on. And again, you have the relative axis, same as in the uh, full spectrum scanner and same as in many other places. And you can have this mouse sensitivity in the detail surface scanner is also set here. And you can also set analog axis or digital input for it. If you don't want to use the mouse to control, you can again set up your pitch um, to, uh, to control that. And of course, they have dead zones. You can control your field of view if you want to. And you can also uh, set this to an axis or as individual key presses. Now, I promise you guys to show you how you can now store and save your key bindings once you're done setting everything up. What you want to go is you want to do into app data. What you would normally do is you go in just into the address line and go uh, percent and then write app data. Like so. Go there. That's into, into roaming. This is not where you want to be though. You want to be into local. And in local, you want to go into the frontier space developments, not the frontier underscore developments, frontier space developments, elite dangerous options bindings and in here you can see um you have various binding files i actually have some rather old binding files all the way back from uh, from the patch 1.8 you can see i've been storing them up through uh, through time but you basically want to take the newest one um, and you can see there are also some backups here uh, that the game to take some backups from time to time but in my case i wanted to take the newest one that is right there and for good measure you can just back up this whole folder if you're ever in doubt but uh, basically, back up those files, put them on a USB stick in the drawer, put them in a Dropbox, put them in whatever location you deem safe, put them just anywhere else on your drive. It, it doesn't matter. It can be in a folder on your desktop. It doesn't matter. Store these somewhere where you have access to them. Because from time to time, it has happened in the past, that key bindings has been cleared doing 
um, larger patches for Elite. And if they're cleared, you have to go back and you have to go through all the different settings that we just walked through again. And it takes about an hour or two, depending on how custom your key bindings are. So back these up, guys. I always keep a back of my key bindings. Do it as soon as you're done with your setup so you have them stored somewhere. So this is my key binding reference guide. I hope you found this video useful. If any of you actually managed to make it all the way to the end of the video, I am quite impressed. Go down and put a I did it in the comment section so people will know, at least I will. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, give the video a like, subscribe, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.